like this, give it to Kill. And I'm just gonna talk, I'm hoping that this is no more than a five, five minute um, periscope. Whenever I fill, uh, one of the first things is I use a large mouth gel so that I am picking up on one side and releasing on the other. I always pick up a lot more product than what I need. I'll show you that right away. And I set it on the gel, not on the alt growth, and the tip of my brush, brush always stays over the top of the gel so that I don't touch the cuticle with it. Now I've already um, used my electric file, I prepared her nails, and now I'm just pulling the excess f straight forward. Um, I prepared her nails, I used the file to remove shine and um, to etch her natural nail. And once I do the, um, uh, typically, especially if there's a lot of outgrowth, I might do the thumbs and then I'll put it, have her put her whole hand in the light and then I'll move to the other thumb. You don't get bubbles in when you pull it? Um, I do not get bubbles in when I pull it. You typically get bubbles when you lift the brush straight up off the nail. So again, just tip of the brush, keep it real close to the um, cuticle area. I'll try and move my little finger out of the way while I'm going around so that all the so it's filled in where it needs to be and now I'm just pulling straight forward um, sometimes if I move a little bit too fast it might get a little bubbles but you can see because I'm pressing down on the gel that's already hardened and if there are a couple little bubbles in here I've got a couple tips for um, remedying that anyway so and then I'm gonna put it right in the light the key to working with um, Master Gel is work quickly. Now this one she had a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a crack. She has a very long nails, and these are two weeks um, grown out. So Someone's what I've what I've used is I've used our Master Fill Extreme coverage underneath our warm opaque, so that every other appointment she has, um, she just has a regular fill. So this is her regular fill appointment. And again, I'm just gonna put the tip of the brush back. Now this time I'm working, and you'll see I'm starting with the little finger, but that is because it's to my left. I'm a right-handed nail tech, and when you're doing a leveling gel, you always wanna work from the left to the right. That way, as you can see, her nails will stay parallel to the table. Even if she rests them, she'll rest them on my hand and I'm not concerned with ridges or things. You can see I just move on pretty quick. If there's a little bubble, I might go back at it, but other than that, not really. What is GMTA? GM, GM, I don't know what GMTA is. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show the speed with which I work in the salon. Uh, Patricia is, uh, is a client of mine. She's been a client of mine for a very long time, so this is very normal for what I do um, but never worry about the ridges in there stop trying to if you are trying to work the product and get it really smooth it's just a waste of time because gel will always smooth itself out far better than we can with our brush and that's the thing um, with gels we don't sculpt gels we guide gels with acrylic you have to sculpt them so now as you can see I'm about to put this hand in it's already perfectly smooth that's why I don't play with it what brand are you using this uh, the brand is my brand and it is masterworks by Amy Becker and the other thing is you'll see that I just put her straight in the light this is a low to no heat gel so I don't have to worry about that and it is stronger than any acrylic I've ever tried all right so now that I'm working on her right hand now I'm starting with the index fingers so that they all rest on my on my hand because it's a leveling gel if I started with her little finger and kept going um, her little finger would be drooping down and the gel would be drooping down that way too. So for that reason, I still move from the left to the right. But I think what surprises most techs when they actually watch us work in the salon, first of all is how much gel I actually pick up, because you can see I picked up a bunch of gel, but it's easy to move a lot of gel around really fast. If you try to work with a little gel because you're thinking thin natural, you struggle, you get air bubbles, you wipe it out of where it needs to be. But if you are using, you see, I even had enough on that for that first finger to do two fingers. That's how much gel I had um, without going back into the jar. That just saved a little time too. That's not why I did it though. I pick up more gel than what I need to avoid bubbles and to move quickly. And you can move that brush um, 
back and forth as fast as you want. You just can't lift it up off of the nail. And I always set it behind and I go around. If, so someone mentioned your speed here really fast. Yeah, it, it. the more you do it, the faster you'll see. Now this time I um, picked it up and I scraped it off because I wanted to make a couple little adjustments. Didn't get quite close enough. I've also got the camera right over me, so I'm, I might not be seeing it quite as well as if I had my face right over the nails, but that's all right. Um, let's see. So then excess. And look at how much I'm lifting up off that, that nail. It's All right, so the two things that do surprise people are that, that I don't play with the product and then wow. that I pick up a lot more than what I actually need. Now I just come back. If, if I use too much or if it's really warm, I might make an adjustment along the sides, but I never will drag a gel brush down the middle of the nail. You'll only ruin the stress arch of it um, and create a, a weaker nail. So then that one goes back in the light. And you didn't hear Patricia scream with heat or anything. Um, and it, it's pretty, pretty simple and straightforward from here. The only other thing I'd say that I do, I clean with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Um, I don't use a fancy cleanser. We do have our cleanser, but that is what it is. It's 99% isopropyl alcohol. I find it works better than acetone or acetone alcohol blends or any other products that are used. Is this a hashtag save broadcast? Save broadcast. Is this a save broadcast? I'm hoping we're saving this broadcast. Um, I did use a hashtag catch to save the broadcast. Plus, I've adjusted the settings. Then when I go to um, fill, and I really wasn't even going to go this far, I have my dust collector. And you can see there's not going to be a lot of filing. Uh, she says only hashtag save will save. Only hashtag save will save. Oh! Thank you so much for that information, um, because we will we'll still be able to um, capture it and hopefully um, get it out there on our YouTube page. And I have demos of this application that I just did already on my YouTube channel, which is Gelmaster 1000. So if you do want to try these techniques and you want to see it, and let's say that this broadcast is an up right away. You could, as soon as the broadcast is over, you could right away, uh, or in 24 hours after it, it um, goes down, you could go right to my YouTube page, Gelmaster1000, and... Someone asked where you are. Oh, I am in Wisconsin. Can't tell by the accent? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I get... Wisconsin. I get, I get teased a lot for that, especially when, I, when I'm traveling around educating. Um, but yes. Um, LED or UV? Um, we're curing, I like to cure in an LED because an LED will always give a slightly stronger cure than an LED. A UV always gives a slightly stronger cure. And that is because hard gels are designed to work with UVs. LEDs are designed to cure soakable colored gels. Now, Master Gel is one of the few um, hard gels that does cure well in an LED, but, um, and we have a lot of nail techs that use our master gel in the LED. Um, and if you do that, 60 seconds, it only gets slightly hotter, I think. Um, but it's not a heat spike, heat spike. Um, and what I mean by that is someone that's super sensitive, it might get hot in the light. But once you, um, as soon as it gets hot, the heat spike then drops off right away. So we don't have to... Um, so the customer isn't in um, distress. Someone said it's UV. UV? Yeah, I, well, like I said, I always recommend to use UV. Some people want to use an LED because they think they're saving time with a 30-second cure. But the reality is that, is that we are not able to um, file that hand or fill that hand in 30 seconds. That normally takes us the that uh, two minutes that it takes for the UV. Now granted, I was applying quicker than two minutes, but you noticed I didn't stop. I just kept going back and forth with it. And actually that UV, um, because I do move a little quicker, sometimes I do file a little bit sooner than two minutes. Uh, someone just came out with a UV that cures in half the time, or an LED does. An L yeah, LEDs always cure in half the time. Um, but like I said, the finished cure, 
I prefer working with a, we're working with a UV. And since there's no damage to the skin, um, if that's the reason for caution for a tech to use an LED, you just have to pull some of the actual um, stats that have, um, the findings that have been done and you'll, you'll find that your client will be much more, their skin would be much more damaged driving their car than they ever would be getting their, um, their nails done. So it's, a lot of this is about educating our, our clients. Oh, and these are also our filing techniques. Um, I rock over the file. I use full length. And by doing so, I keep the um, shape going all the way up to the, the stress area of the nail. Someone said you need to move to California. Oh, we will be in California. We're planning on being in California and getting more classes together out there. I'd love to be in California. Um, but, okay, so I think what I'll do is I will um, just show you how to apply the sealant and then... Well, you know what? I'm going to make the sealant a uh, different broadcast because I want to get back to my client. I don't want to take any more of her time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around. All right. All right. And I'm just going to finish up the broadcast right now. So if you do have any questions, you can always message me at um, Masterworks. Wait a minute. Masterworksgel at gmail.com. Um, and we're going to be um, posting weekly broadcasts now so that we can help you all out with um, the gels because there are so many people that are educating and teaching in gels that are newer and they're using, well, I don't want to say what they're using, um, but some of the techniques are a little bit um, trickier to use. Um, it can lead to lifting. It can lead to um, um, more time. And so... Come to Myrtle Beach, October 9th and 10th. Okay. Oh, 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 that's right. I forgot about that. All right. Um, but, yeah, definitely message me, and we will um, hopefully take some of the mystery out of gel, make it easier, cut your time. Definitely cut your times down. So, uh, yes, I I would love to come to New York. I've, I've done training in New York as well. Um, if we can get 10 or more people in your area, um, we can come out and teach a class. Uh Contact me. Let me know what you're what you're thinking. Where you would like a class, and if you help organize a class in your area, then we do something special for you as well. So, um, thank you so much for joining. Yes, I'll be at the Northwest Nail Tech Retreat this year.